So recently I decided that I wanted to add uh, some more SATA ports to my home server. I had some extra drives laying around and decided to put them to use, um, but realized that I was running out of ports uh, or native ports on my motherboard. So I decided to jump onto Google, do some research to see what my options were, and I ran across a search result for a company called Siba. Uh, I jumped over to their website, did some looking around, and I found a four port SATA card that I could just plug into my computer. So I grabbed the, uh, the ID number for that card, went over to Amazon, found it, placed my order, and then waited a little while. So when, when it got here, I opened it up. Obviously it had the card in it. Uh, it had some instructions. Um, luckily it also came with four SATA cables, which I really appreciated. Um, I'm always you know, losing those, not able to find them, whatever. So it was nice to see that four of those came with it. And then of course there was an installation CD, um, which we ended up not needing. So when I opened up the bag, um, immediately I noticed it looked just exactly like what I saw not only on the website, but also on Amazon. The problem that I did run into, however, is that um, in all of my uh, excitement to get uh, this uh, new SATA card for my motherboard, um, I noticed that I got the mini PCI Express instead of the regular PCI card, and then realized that the card wouldn't fit. So after doing some research and trying to figure out what the best solution was here, uh, other than just buying a new card, uh, it was my mistake. I wasn't going to send it back. Um, so I did some research and realized that um, the the wireless network cards that a lot of times you'll get for uh, for your PCs are really just uh, mini PCI Express network cards like you find at a laptop um, that are just stuck on an adapter uh, for a PCI Express slot. So I jumped back onto Amazon, <clears throat> found a card that I was pretty sure would work, ordered it, it showed up. That unboxing experience, of course, came with the card, uh, a couple of external antennas, um, an installation CD, which of course we didn't use because we didn't even use this hardware necessarily, and some instructions. Um, from there, I opened it up. Again, it looked exactly like I expected it to. Um, and so I immediately got into uh, the deconstruction or the tearing apart of this card uh, to put the other card into place. So of course, I took off the antennas and all of that. Um, and then just a couple of quick screws, popped the, the mini PCI Express network card out, swapped a couple of screws around, and then was able to use um, all of the existing hardware to get uh, my SATA card put into place so that I could then install it into my home server. So then of course installation was was pretty simple. I plugged my the cables I wanted into the card, plugged the card into the motherboard, and then plugged the other end of those cables into my hard drives and I was good to go. So once everything was back up and running, um, I, I wanted to do some testing to make sure that um, the, the card wasn't going to um, impact performance at all, especially since I was using that bridge. Um, I moved over a series of, um, of large ISO files, as well as a series of uh, smaller files. Uh, the ISOs were about four gigs in size uh, total for that folder. And then uh, the smaller files was actually a series of, of ROMs for an emulator. There was about six gigs in total, but uh, of course, if you know anything about ROMs, those are very small files. And what I discovered um, after um, you know, testing both uh, the, the drive or both of those drives plugged directly into the motherboard um, compared to both of those drives plugged into the SATA card, I noticed that uh, the differences in speed were 
were a close enough to be margin of error differences there. So um, I was actually really stoked to see that I was getting the same performance, no performance loss at all. Um, plus I was getting four additional slots that I could use to plug in expansion, uh, expansion drives or, or optical drives or whatever the case may be. So um, overall, while, while I did have a bit of a snafu in the process, I was actually pretty stoked that I was able to um, kind of turn this into an experiment, uh, get some test results out of it, find out that everything works flawlessly, um, and and again, I'm getting something out of the deal here, um, both some experience as well as some extra connectivity on my motherboard. Now, of course, ideally, um, you wouldn't want to use a mini PCI Express card um, on a standard ATX board unless your board has a mini PCI Express card. Um, a lot of time, or a card slot rather, you know, a lot of times those boards are going to be like your micro ATX boards, things like that. So uh, if you run into a situation like I did where you're not paying attention, uh, know that you can always get one of those adapters to plug a uh, micro or, or a, a mini uh, PCI Express card into a PCI Express express slot. So I will have links to uh, both of those cards. Both of them again are from SIBA. So I will put links to both of those in the description down below. Um, both I'll put uh, a link to their website so you can see that as well as a link to uh, their Amazon store so that uh, or to the, the products on Amazon rather uh, so that you can pick up the same cards uh, if you want to or need to go through the same process I did. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. I've got more content coming out very soon. And if you find this video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That helps me and the channel out a lot. Uh, anyway, thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.